Welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me. Hello, I am Rachel, the host, creator, CEO, director, producer, choreographer, writer, and hype man for the show. And the host. Did I say the host? I forgot. Um, it was my birthday over the weekend, and it was also the release of my friend Jojo Siwa, her new music song. Oh my God. Long story short, I can't tell if I, this all happened over the weekend. Oh my God, I'm everywhere because I don't think my brain is on in my head anymore. My brain left. So did my voice and my ability to live. <laughs> um, so Thursday night, my friend Jojo had her release party for her song Karma in the music video. So at midnight, though, on Thursday, from when it was going from Thursday to Friday, it turned into my birthday. So me and some of my friends were in West Hollywood, which is the gay district of L.A., and we partied for the release of Karma, and then once midnight hit, for my, par- for my birthday. And uh, I didn't get much sleep that night, and then I woke up, and it was my birthday. So I wanted to chill and do nothing, but my friend's in town, and she really wanted to go downtown. It was the only night we could take her downtown in the town that we live. So I went out Friday night for my birthday and danced and sang. And then Saturday, I had my third annual Rachel Olympics birthday party where I make all of my friends compete for this like $50 trophy. It's a lot of fun, but the whole time I'm screaming. And then after the games are done, we sing and we dance. So I had three nights in a row where I sang and I danced with my friends and didn't get much sleep. Sunday, I woke up. Today's Monday for me. Sunday, I woke up and my throat hurt so bad. And I just thought it was from screaming. And then today I woke up. It's Monday. It hurts even worse. I, th- I think maybe I have strep or I just lost my voice and I'm still extremely tired. Something's wrong with me. I'm going down fast. I hit 33 and my body said, bye-bye. I had been gearing up. My, the end of my 32 years, I was, I was breaking down and then 33 hit and my body just said, time out. You're done. Sit your ass down. Go to bed. Drink some tea. Be old. So I'm struggling. My voice is not fully here. I don't know if I can get through a full hour. I don't even know if I can get to 45 minutes on this business, but I am giving you a fucking podcast. And you might think, oh, Rachel, why don't you wait to record it? If you've been watching my vlog channel, you know I'm trying to give myself a week off to do projects. I'm going to have nine days straight of doing projects, and I'm so excited, but I need to get all my work done in order to do it. So I can't skip days of work. I can't do anything. I have to do all my things. So you guys get a strained voice podcast. It's going to be even more strained tomorrow. (laughs) I'm never going to give myself a break. I'm just going to keep going. So I hope you all enjoy this. Let's begin, shall we? Now today, I asked you guys what you wanted out of this podcast, and I've, I'm coming up with segments to do. So the podcast isn't just one thing. It'll be like different segments. There's going to be a question of the day on what pisses me off, and then the main thing, right? But I thought, before we officially start the segments, right? Because I'm going to need you guys to put your questions down below for me to answer in the next week, so on and so forth. Fourth, not fourths. The force is not with me today. But what pisses me off? Someone else suggested that I go through and read my book I wrote a million years ago. When did this get published? I don't even know. Does it say anywhere? First edition, June 2017. So what is that, seven years ago? Did I write a book seven years ago? I wrote a book seven years ago titled 101 Things That Piss Me Off because This is how my YouTube channel got started. This is how I got started on the internet is every week I would post a video about what pissed me off. I used to be a very angry person. I used to have a lot of pent up aggression inside of me. I don't anymore. I've solved it. Getting a dog, Blaze, taught me patience. Coming out of the closet taught me happiness. But not that the thing with coming out of the closet is I didn't realize I was in the closet. So there's not this like, pent up anger from when I was like, oh, no one's going to accept me or anything. I literally, Blaze, stop looking at the treats. You did teach me patience, but I still sometimes don't have it. Anyway, 
I don't know what I'm saying. I've grown. I've changed. And I think I've become a calmer, more rational, logical person with age. But seven years ago, I was mad. And I had a lot of things that pissed me off. And I stopped doing the segment on my, my YouTube channel. And I don't even agree with half the things in this book anymore. Or they just don't get me as angry. But I thought it'd be fun to go through it. You might still agree with them. But this is, what, how old was I? If it was seven years ago, how old was I? I'm 33. Hold on. I got to calculate. All right. So this is what 26-year-old me got pissed off about. And I remember when I wrote this book, a lot of it, I actually had to just, it took me, it took me a while to get to 101 things, I'll say. I had to really go in the nooks of the cr- and crannies of my anger to figure out what pissed me off. So if you've already read this book, maybe it'll give you some nostalgia. If you haven't yet, you could still buy it on Amazon. 101 things that pissed me off. Rachel Ballinger. All right. Oh my God. Guys, I wrote a book. Who was I? This was the thing back in the day. Back in 2017, YouTubers wrote books. And then TikTok came around and no one has the attention span for anything anymore. I'm not mad about it. I love TikTok. Okay. Should it just be a dramatic reading? And then I'm obviously going to get distracted. Let's start with the introduction. (laughs) Guys, this is so dumb. Here we go. Have you ever gotten so angry that your fists curled? All of your muscles tightened and every word out of your mouth was a scream. Then someone tells you to calm down because it's not that big of a deal. Screw that person. I hate that person. You have every right to be unnecessarily angry. You have the right to curse, scream, and throw things. Most people might not get angry at someone for going the speed limit, but lucky for you, I'm not most people. I will yell at that law-abiding citizen. I will scream at them from the safety of my car and tell them how stupid I think they are because that person pissed me off. My name is Rachel Ballinger, and I have, admittedly to a fault, a short and loud temper. Welcome to my list of 101 things that piss me off. Some of these things are serious. Some of these things are petty. Some of these things might be considered, quote unquote, first world problems. However, I call them annoyances that simply need to stop. And I feel that most of you will agree with me. But frankly, I do not care if you do or don't. Let's do this. I am so full of anger, unrightfully so. My anger is not valid in that introduction. Oh, that was aggressive and intense. Oh my God. If I wrote a book now, it'd be 101 things that I love. 101 things that are satisfyingly amazing. I would not be anywhere near this. Man, I've changed a lot in seven years. All right, let's do this bad boy. Number one, you know what pisses me off? When people ask me, does this smell weird? Never, never do I ever want to be your sniff tester. Why would I? Chances are it does smell weird. If you are questioning the smell of something, it usually means the smell is questionable. Don't put it near me, you nasty. Also, don't ask me to taste anything either. My friend once asked me to taste her milk for her, and I ended up spraying white chunky liquid all over the kitchen and shoving anything I could find into my mouth to get rid of that sour taste. Have some human decency. If something smells questionable, just throw it out. Listen, I think that one's valid. The anger in which I've expressed it, not so much. But if something smells gross, don't make me smell it. Like when someone says, ew, this smells bad. Here, smell. I'm going to stand by this one. I don't want to be your sniff tester. The other day, Abby ate a salted duck egg and spit it out. And we were supposed to taste it together, but she's like, I'll go first. And she spit it out. And then she was like, no, you, I was like, do you, do you need me to taste it too? She's like, no, that was disgusting. Do not taste this. That's love. She tasted it for the both of us and was like, you do not have to go through that. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, this is basically the gist of the book, <laughs> but we'll move on. Number two, you know what pisses me off? When people say water doesn't have a taste, I will stand by this till the day I die. I'm starting out strong in this book. When people say water doesn't have a taste, you're wrong. It does. It tastes like water. End of story. And then I've written a diagram. One column says things. The other column says tastes like. Pizza? Tastes like pizza. Grass? Tastes like grass. Cheese? Shocker. 
Tastes like cheese. Chicken, chicken, water. It tastes like water, everybody. And here's the thing. Someone, I saw someone, this is not in the book now, and I'm just going to talk about what I've seen on TikTok. Someone explained how silence still has a sound. Like if a room's quiet and silent, the room, this room's silence in my office will be different than the silence in a library or the silence in nature. Silence all has a different sound, just like water all has a different taste. You can't tell me that you're going to drink some Dasani and it's going to taste the same as Evian or Fiji or Smartwater or Arrowhead or the river or water from your tap. Water from your tap versus water from your tap that's gone through a Brita filter. It all tastes different because water has a taste. And ladies and gentlemen, I will stand by that one forever, forever. Because you can taste test water. If water didn't have a taste, you wouldn't be able to taste test it. Prove me wrong. You can't. Stop putting your energy into it. I've won this. We've all, we're gotten through two. We've gotten through two, guys. There's 101 things. We got 99 to go. But first, let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Oh, my God, my voice. Skims, Skims is our sponsor for today. I normally find bras to be so uncomfortable and constricting that they're the first thing I rip off my body when I get home for the day. But Skims has changed that. You know I love Skims underwear, so I finally had to try their bras, and Skims has delivered again. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give, but what I wasn't expecting is how comfortable they are and how much my girlfriend steals them from me. Even the underwire bras, I'm wearing them all day and I barely even notice them. Definitely not the first thing I take off when I get home anymore. And I especially love the Fits Everybody t-shirt bra from Skims. It's literally the best t-shirt bra I have ever owned. I wear it almost every day and I need it in more colors because it's the only bra I wear. The straps are adjustable and the Fits Everybody material is obviously the best for all day comfort. And my girlfriend very much loves the Fits Everybody push-up bra in Onyx. So if you guys want to try them out, I highly suggest Yes, you do. Shop Skims Bras at skims.com. Now available in 62 sizes. It goes from 30A to 46H. That's a lot. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that I sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select my show in the drop down menu that follows. You know what pisses me off? Okay, I don't agree with this one, guys. This one. I'm not four anymore, so just know that this was past Rachel and not present Rachel. You know what pisses me off? When people type, ha ha, or LOL. No, I don't. I do this now, so fuck that shit. But here's what it says. Now, I'm not against these things. They express laughter or that something is funny. I often write them to express such things, but let's be real. When people type, ha ha, or LOL, you know that zero laughter came from their body. So unless you write, I won't think you actually found anything funny. And adding LOL at the end of an uncomfortable text doesn't make it any less uncomfortable. In fact, it makes it more uncomfortable. Here's an example of an LOL not helping. Ellie texted, hey, when I spent the night, I think I leaked my period of blood on your sheets. LOL. That LOL just made everything 80 times more awkward. I don't know where I was going with this. I, it doesn't piss me off that people write it, but I was just aware that no one's laughing. I don't know. Maybe it was funny back then. I hope some of this was funny back then. I think a little bit of it's funny now. <clears throat> the next. You know what pisses me off? When people get 10 times stupider when entering an airport or airplane. I still stand by this one, guys. Sorry, this one holds true. Here it is. People forget how to walk. Buckle a seatbelt, follow a sign, follow verbal instructions, push a button, or even how to carry a bag once they've stepped into an airport, especially in the security line. It really isn't hard to figure out that you have to take off your shoes, belt, and jacket, and then take out your laptop. Also, don't bring objects that can kill people or any other large containers full of mysterious liquids. These are very simple rules. And then once you're through the scanning process, please step aside while you redress yourself so the rest of us can get to our bags. It's not rocket science, people. I still stand by this. And yes, I know that when you go to a different country, the airport system might be a little bit different and the bagging system might be a little bit different, but get out of people's way. 
That's the main thing in an airport. Just get out of people's way because there's people who are running late, who know what they're doing, they need to get done. There's been times where I've been an issue, but I step to the fucking side and I'm no longer an issue. Again, it is not rocket science. And I know there's people who've never flown before. Get there early. And just because you want to take your time doesn't mean you have the right to slow down the people behind you. Come on, y'all. Get it together. All right. Number five, and I still stand by this. I still stand by this one. Even though so many people in my life are, do this. When people do that, they're so, everyone I love does this. I'm the only one that doesn't do this. <sighs> okay. You'll see. You'll see. You know what pisses me off? When people don't brush their teeth immediately after waking up. I feel like I'm the only person in the world that does this. I wake up and the first thing I do is I brush my teeth. And the majority of the people I know, and I love them dearly, don't. They get up. They start making breakfast. They start doing things. They talk to people. Does it? Okay, I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read the intro. I'm just going to read the, the paragraph. And then I'm going to rant more about it because I forgot. I am passionate about this. When I wake up, my mouth tastes disgusting. Everybody's does. How can people get out of bed and think, yes, this is the taste I want in my mouth the rest of the morning? It's gross. Brush your teeth and don't use the excuse, well, I want to eat my breakfast first. Here's a bit of information. You can eat breakfast after you brush your teeth. I know. I just blew your mind and you're welcome. Also, you can brush your teeth twice. No one's stopping you from doing that. I stand by, I think I'm a genius. I, honestly, I thought I was going to get cringy read, reading this. I thought I was going to give myself the ick. I think I had some valid viewpoints seven years ago, and I'm going to stand by some of them. Not all of them. Out of 101 things, there's no way I'm going to agree with everything. But that one, yes. Also, I wear a retainer, so I think having to rip that out in the morning is also what causes me to want to brush my teeth. I just won't get it. I don't think I'll ever get it. All right. Number six, you know what pisses me off? When people roll down my window in the car without asking. This one stands. This one, it still pisses me off. This one stands. Here it is. I'm a human with long hair that on most days I wear down. Not today, but that's fine. That means that if a lot of wind blows in my face, my hair blows everywhere and gets completely tangled, resulting in me hating everything the rest of the day. People with short hair don't understand this problem. Therefore, it's usually short-haired people who decide to roll down my window without asking and get so confused when I roll it back up or threaten to murder them. This is just a warning to every human out there. People with long hair usually don't like it blowing in their face. Keep the windows up. You can roll down yours all you want, but you better not let that wind touch my hair. And then I have a video, uh, not a video, two pictures of me in a car, one with the windows up and the one with the windows down. And it's, it's funny. Also, that is such a baby me. I'm a baby in this. Strachel is in this book, y'all. Is she a baby? Uh, yeah, this one still stands. And it's, I said I'm a, I'm a human with long hair and sh short repaired people are usually the ones that roll down the windows. That was just my non-gender way of saying that guys fucking always did this to me. It pissed me off. My ex always rolled down the window. He was obsessed with convertibles. And he'd always want to take his convertible. I'm like, no, actually, it was, the, I bought it. I bought the car. But that was a dumbass move of me. But he'd always want to ride with the windows down, the convertible top down. I'm like, I don't want to. It will mess up my hair. It's not fun for me. And then I had to put your hair up, put it in a hat. Well, then that's how my hair has to stay until day, what, hair washing day. If you put your hair up in a hat, I personally, because of the type of hair I have, I can't take it out of that hat and then go about my day. No, I will have hat hair until I wash my hair again. Oh, man, I didn't think, I did not think I was going to be this upset. I didn't think, I thought I dealt with my anger. Maybe I haven't dealt with my anger. I've just ignored the things that make me angry. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I've just cut out the, all the negativity in my life. All right, here's one. You know what pisses me off? When you text someone something really funny and they don't respond. And then I have a screenshot of me texting someone named Kelsey. I don't know a Kelsey. I made up all the names for the screenshots. I said, I've been feeling really good about myself lately. Every time I get naked in the bathroom, the shower gets turned on. And then, then that screenshot, no one responded. And so I said, excuse me, that was funny, right back. I'm actually guilty of this now. I do that to people. I get overwhelmed 
with text messages. I have a really hard time responding to people. Um, I'm working on it in therapy, but I have a really hard time responding to people and reaching out to people. Like I will get up the courage to respond to a text and then they text me back. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do that again. I don't know why, but text messages stress me out. I've been trying to fix it, but it's just not working. So I'm at that. I'm that person now. But also I hate when people do it to me. I'm a hypocrite. Deal with it. (laughs) All right. Number eight, you know what pisses me off? When people start a sentence with, I'm sorry, but actually, yeah, this is, this is still valid because no good apology should have a but in it. Just so you know, here's what I said. Chances are they're not sorry. My father taught me that a true apology should never have but in it. If you are trying to express your actions, then you are not taking full responsibility for them. If you say I'm sorry, but before you actually do the thing that you're apologizing for, then you're not sorry in the least bit. Because if you were sorry, you wouldn't have done it in the first place. It's the same as saying, I'm sorry you feel that way. That's not an apology. I see you fake apologizing. I see you. And then I said, I've made a list of fake apologies and excuses so you can look out for them. Or so you can stop using them. I'm sorry, but I'm that kind of person that always tells the truth. So I had to tell that guy you liked him. Nope. I'm sorry, but you're dumb if you thought that test was hard. Oh my God. I, I think that these came from like genuine experiences for me. I'm sorry, but I was just really hungry. So I had to eat your lunch or I would have gotten really cranky. What are these excuse? What is this? I don't remember writing this. But I'm also kind of confused by it. You could tell I had a specific bone to pick with someone about how they've apologized to me. And I'm just trying to put it in my book somehow. And it doesn't really quite make sense, but that's fine. Sorry that I have to say this, but you look fat in that. That's just being a dick. That's like just saying no offense. I'm sorry that I told everyone your biggest secret, but you were being annoying earlier, so I had every right. Those aren't real apologies or excuses. What the fuck? That was a weird entry. I'm sorry, but that one was weird. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's do one more and then we'll do another sponsor break. Oh my God, my throat is killing me. Are are you annoyed or turned on by the sound of my voice being like this? I personally am just in pain. All right, I'm I'm in so much pain that I'm drinking tea, you guys. Instead of coffee or an energy drink, I'm drinking tea. Who am I? Okay, this one I still, still stands true. Even though I know why sometimes employees have to do this, but I'm still annoyed by it. So here we go. You know what pisses me off? When store employees are up my butt the entire time I'm in the store. I know most retail salespeople work on commission. Therefore, they are friendly. Ask if I need help and try to do whatever they can to make my shopping experience as blissful as possible. But for me, that means letting me shop in peace and not reminding me of your sale promotion six times, asking if I need something in a different size, if I need help finding something, what I'm looking for that day, what my favorite color is, what I ate that day, what my favorite season is, where I'm from, if I like cats or dogs, which Kardashian I most like, and then telling me about your sales promotions once more. I'm a grown competent woman. I can read your sales signs, and I know that if I have any problem, you'll be there to help me. You don't need to hold my hand. I know I sound like a terrible person right now. It's because I am. But on the real, leave me alone. A cordial hello. Need any help with anything today? Is fine. And then I drew me in a store being annoyed by salespeople. Um, this was, I felt like I didn't explain this correctly because it's all supposed to be like short little blurbs, but like, I, I love a hello. Welcome to our store. You can tell me your sales promotions once you can say, I'll be right over here if you need anything. Or like one time you come up and you're like, see my hands are full. You're like, Hey, would you like me to start a room? But there were just so many experiences when this is before COVID when people would just go to malls. Now everyone just shops online. Right. But there was a t- couple times that my sister and I kept going to the malls. And the sales employees would just follow us around. It's not like they recognized us or anything. They just followed us around the whole time and kept talking to us. And we were just browsing. And it happened like 10 times in a row. We're like, is this the new thing? I'm so confused. So I got unvalidly angry about it and wrote about it in a book. But I understand that sometimes team members are like forced to do that. Like their managers make them. But there were some that I was like, you are, this is, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving now. I remember that. Um, It doesn't happen anymore, but it did happen back when I wrote this book. All right. Okay. We're going to read one more and then a sponsor. You know what pisses me off when people say, 
No offense. That does not make things any less offensive. You know it's offensive and yet you say it anyway. If you are about to say something offensive, instead of saying, no offense, just don't say the offensive thing. And that seems like a better idea. If you do say something offensive, you're stupid. No offense, though. (laughs) I stand by that one. I think that one was funny and I like it. And with that, we're going to check to see if we have another sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. (laughs) I'm dead. Home Chef. Home Chef is our sponsor for today. You know, I'm not the biggest cook, and that's why I love meal kits. Being able to feast on delicious meals without long prep and cook times, and that is why I'm shouting out Home Chef. Home Chef's meals are effortless, even for someone like me who isn't making it on Top Chef anytime soon. Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef-designed recipes conveniently delivered to your doorstep to simplify your cooking experience. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions, speedy recipes, ready in less than 30 minutes, oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, or quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes, Home Chef has you and the entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. There's over 30 options a week and serves a variety of dietary needs. And you know I'm picky and I think that they're great. Not only is it convenient, but it's economical too. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus free shipping on your first box and free dessert for life at homechef.com slash Rachel. That's homechef.com slash Rachel for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Homechef.com slash Rachel. You must be an active subscriber to receive the free dessert. Oh my God. If you're watching on YouTube, can you look at Blaze real quick? Are you kidding me? He looks so cute. I got to take a picture of him. I love his dog. He annoys the shit out of me and I love him so much. What is this? What is this? What is he doing? All right. I got hair stuck on my lip. My lips are chapped. I'm falling apart, guys. I should probably go on like a silent retreat or something. That's why I should. That's what I should do on my birthday. Oh, freaking I. All right. Number 11. We're not getting through this book, y'all. But we can keep going. Okay, this one I still stands true. This one I actually have a phobia of. This one's going to stick with me the rest of my life. I'm trying to work on it in therapy, but here it is. You know what pisses me off? When people chew with their mouths open. Now, before I go into this, I do know that in some cultures, you're supposed to. It's like a compliment to the chef and whatnot. But I have a phobia of that noise. So, I see, I have grown. Even if I still stay true to the, what I think pisses me off, I, still, I, I feel I've grown in understanding and accepting it more. Here we go. If someone is smacking their lips and chewing with their mouth open, I actually get violent and will leave the town they are in. It's happened before. Just ask anyone in my family. It's all about the sound. I can't stand the wet smacking sound. It's actually a disorder called misophonia. I don't get how everyone doesn't have this disorder when they hear this particular sound, though. How do people think it's okay to chew like that? Do they like to test the laws of gravity and see how far open they can get their mouth without the food falling out? Here are diagrams of how a mouth should and shouldn't look with eating. And then I just drew lips and then someone's smacking their lips. I think it was a really good artwork, by the way. So if you ever want to have a meal with me and not have your face bashed against the table, chew with your mouth closed and don't make wet smacking noises when you take a bite. I've dealt with this my whole life, basically. Like I remember as a child getting angry about this. Like I, as far as I can remember, I've had this disorder. And I've always, I've tried to figure out ways to deal with it. And there's been a lot of time where I learned how to spell at least today. Like, hey, I'd be like, hey, I, I have the disorder of misophonia. Or I have the disorder that makes it so I can't handle uh, lip smacking. You're gorgeous, but can you mind, do you mind closing your mouth when you eat? And I've said that to so many people. They go, oh, same. I hate that too. And then they continue to eat with their mouth open and smack. And it's so disgusting to me. And I understand it's not like a lot of people are fine with it. The majority of the world is fine with it. And in some cultures, you're supposed to do that. But, oh my God, that has haunted me my whole life. All right, next one. You know what pisses me off 
when people miss a high five on purpose. Okay, this doesn't piss me off anymore, anymore, but I still am annoyed with it, okay? Screw you. Hitting a perfect high five is a ridiculously satisfying feeling. Missing a high five is the worst feeling ever. When someone does it on purpose, i.e. down low too slow, that makes them a disgusting person who should rot in hell. Holy shit, I'm pissed. Oh my God, I have anger in me. Holy God damn. Okay. How dare you? How dare you take away an amazing feeling and replace it with a terrible one? I hate you. You're not funny. You're mean and you make my heart sad. Side note, if you're terrible at high fives, look at the person's elbow and not their hand. You'll never miss. Oh, I was a nice little, give you a little, a little tip. Um, oh my God, was I angry? That was so aggressive. I, that was so violent and evil. Okay, God. Yeah. I mean, I still don't like that, but I don't have that much anger towards it anymore. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Okay, this one, this next one, number 13, I am guilty of now. I'm a hypocrite, basically. You know what pisses me off? When people take snowy mirror pictures. So I made up a term for this, basically. When someone takes a picture of themselves in the mirror, but that mirror is so dirty that it looks like the person is in a snowstorm. I call this a snowy mirror picture. They might look super hot, but no one will ever be able to tell through all the fingerprints and spittle. Is it really that difficult to wipe a mirror off before snapping a picture? They may also need to clean up the room a bit. No one wants to see a pile of dirty underwear in the background. Nobody. And no one has ever put slob in the pro category of dating. I've taken pictures of myself to demonstrate. There's a picture of me taking a picture with a ridiculous push-up bra on. Oh my God. If you have this book, go to number 13. That push-up bra I'm wearing, get the fuck out. My boobs have never been that big in my life. I'm an A. I'm an A student. I'm an A cup. All right. Those are not, that's a push-up. I want 90% of that boob is a push-up, is a bra. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Who do I think I am? Fucking Strachel. All right. Moving on to number 14. You know what pisses me off? When you leave someone a voicemail, but they don't listen to it. Okay, but now I'm going to say, who the fuck is leaving voicemails? I actually, side note, love that on an iPhone, when someone leaves you a voicemail or voice recording or a voice memo or a voice of something, it'll show you the text of what that person is saying. Absolutely love that. Best feature on an iPhone, by far. I don't know if they do it on other phones. I'm sure they probably did. I'm sure Apple stole it from a Google phone or something, but A plus, A plus. All right, let's see what, let's see what I'm pissed off about here. Oh, the voicemails, okay. I could never do this. Such a little butthead. I could never do this because the, I burped so much just now. It came out of nowhere. Holy sh- Oh my God. Here we go. <clears throat> from the top, everybody. Five, six, seven, eight. I could never do this because that little notification annoys the crap out of me, but to each his own. What really bugs me is when I leave someone an important voicemail with important details and that person calls me back without even listening to it. Then I have to repeat myself and say it all over again. What was the point of leaving the voicemail in the first place? Voicemail was created for a reason. And then I put a little picture of a notification on a voicemail. I said, See that little notification? It means I left you a voicemail and you should listen to it to find out why I called. Okay, this one's dated. Because if I call someone and they don't answer, I will text them telling them why I called. No one leaves voicemails anymore. Only your doctor leaves a voicemail. So that one is dated. I've dated myself. Things change in seven years. Oh my God. I don't know how much longer my voice can handle this. You know what pisses me off though? The call and run. This is when, I still think this is valid to this day. This is when someone calls you, but you miss the call by a second and you call them right back within two seconds and they don't answer. Why? Did me not answering their call cause them to go into a hysterical frenzy, making them chuck their phone into the black abyss of the sea and run for the hills? I'll call them, text them, leave voicemails, but they won't respond. I become obsessed with needing to know why they called. Why won't they respond? Then I start freaking out and make up crazy scenarios of why they didn't answer. Maybe they were dying and called me for help, but then they passed out. What if a kidnapper took them and said that they had one phone call 
but no more. And I missed it. And that kidnapper killed them. What if they were on who wants to be a millionaire? And I was their phone call and could have won them a million dollars, but I missed it. And now they'll be poor forever. What if they got stranded in the middle of the desert and they used the last of their battery power to call me and then that phone died before I could call back? What if they were calling? My God, I'm, I'm ridiculous. What if they were calling because they won an all expense paid vacation around the world that was leaving right in that instant? And they could bring one person with them, but that one person had to pick up the phone right then. And unbeknownst to them, I was finishing the last bite of my Costco pizza and wanted to finish chewing before talking on the phone. And now they're gone, and I've missed out on the chance of a lifetime. Clearly, I freak out about these things. Just pick up the phone when I call back. This sounds like a me problem, actually, and not anyone else's. So I apologize for that one. It still bugs me, but... I think I need to take care of some things within me and not project them onto other humans. All right. Number 16. You know what pisses me off? When people tell me their dreams. Okay, here's the thing. Before I read this, I, I don't get pissed off at this anymore, but it still annoys me. But a lot of people just love telling people their dreams. So I have learned to just let people tell me their dreams and it's not, it just nod and let them say their things because... I'm not going to be angry that someone's telling me their dreams. Like, and I'm talking about like their sleeping dreams, not like their dreams in life. I'm talking about their sleeping dreams. I don't care, but I've learned that I, it's better if I listen to them and validate them and make them feel heard rather than getting angry at them. So here we go. First off, I just hate dreams in general. It's either a nightmare, which is obviously terrible, or they're great and magical, which are awesome when you're asleep, but suck once you wake up. Want to know why? Because they will never come true. Your brain is basically teasing you, you little punk. But I absolutely hate when I hear the five words. In my dream last night, also, I want to slap people who get mad at someone because of something he or she did in a dream. Do you not realize it wasn't actually that person doing it? Dreams are pointless, and therefore, I don't want to hear about them. Stop telling me about them. Go away. Okay. One, I still hate dreams. I, I, my favorite night sleeps are when I do not dream at all. And my therapist says we either dream about something we desire or something we hate for the most part. It's just, I never know what to say when people are like, oh my God, my dream was so crazy last night. Like this happened and this happened. And I'm like, yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> like crazy. It's not real. But I've learned to, to listen to people and validate them. Uh, I still hate dreams. And I don't need to listen to what you dreamed about. But I'm not as angry about it anymore. All right, we're just going to do a couple more because my voice is uh, giving out. And I don't know if you're enjoying this or not. This was a tester to see if you enjoy this. All right, number 17. When people don't understand when PMS happens, this, it doesn't, this still pisses me off. because. It doesn't happen as much anymore because I'm not around a bunch of toxic idiots. But when people, I'm going to explain it in this chapter, I think. But when people say, no, I'm not going to, I'm just going to read it. I'm just going to read it and then I'll talk. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to yell at anyone who says someone's on their period to explain emotional behavior. Don't they know that PMS stands for pre-menstrual syndrome? Pre, meaning before. A woman's hormones are out of whack before her period and go back to normal once it starts. That's not like fully true, but PMS is before, okay? But our hormones are always going up and down in every which way. But like the quote unquote bitch syndrome that happens before a period, it's before, it's pre. <laughs> I stand by that. I am no exception to this rule. I always want to cry one or two days before my period starts. But once it does, I'm back to being a sane human. Well, as sane as I can get. If you know a girl is on her period and simultaneously mad at you, she's not mad at you because she's on her period. She's mad at you because you're a dick. So I used to hang out with a lot of toxic men, and I don't anymore. Though this not, no longer like comes up in my life, but still. Okay, I continue. If my words still didn't get, <laughs> if my words still didn't get it through your thick skull, I've included a calendar showing where PMS is in relation to a period. And I literally drew a calendar <laughs> that has like when she's on her period versus when she's PMSing. 
Oh, and one more thing. Telling a girl that she must be on her period, that she's PMSing, or that she's being overly emotional has helped with nothing whatsoever in 100% of situations. Don't blame a woman's emotions on the lining of her uterus shedding. Blame it on the fact that you suck as a human being. Now, I am in a lesbian relationship now, and uh, my girlfriend and I are very in tune to when the other person is PMSing, when they're on their period, all that stuff. So Abby will sometimes, or I will sometimes get in a bad mood, and the other person knows it has to do with the period. But that doesn't make their emotions or my emotions or her emotions any less valid. She's just in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood. Okay. You can't treat someone poorly because of that, but you're in a bad mood. Done. I'm in a bad mood. Okay. As long as you're still treating the people around you kindly, it doesn't matter. Now, telling my girlfriend or her telling me, hey, you're PMSing doesn't help. There have been times where I've gone, why, Ed, why do I feel like I want to cry? And Abby would be like, well, do you think you're PMSing? Because I like to have a reasoning behind things. But if we're having a bad day or we're angry at something, it's still valid. I still have those emotions. PMSing is like heightening my normal emotions. So I still have those. I still have those feelings. They're just more heightened when like one to two days before my period. And everyone's different. And there's clearly a lot more that goes on to it. But basically, I just hated when guys said, she must be in her period or someone's on her period or, oh, you must be PMSing because you're in your period. If you're going to fucking use that as an excuse to get away with your shitty behavior, at least understand that you can't be PMSing while on your period, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm still pissed about it, apparently. It doesn't even come up anymore. Okay, number 18. You know what pisses me off when people say, I don't care, but they really do. If you ask someone what they want to eat and they say, I don't care, then they have forfeited their right to have an opinion on what you choose. Therefore, if you pick something and they reject your decision, they have lied. They can be as picky as they want, as long as they never say, I don't care. They should help make their own decision by telling you what they want or eat whatever you order without complaining. So... I, people deal with this a lot with food when you're like, Hey, what do you want? I don't care. Okay. Do you want to get Taco Bell? And they're like, no, I don't want that. So you do care. So what I've done when I'm about to say, I don't care, but I really do. I go, uh, I just, I pick categories. I'm like, I want something healthy and fresh and cold, or I want something dirty or I really want some carbs. I try and break it down that way. Instead of just a broad, I don't care. I do care. I just don't know specifically what I want. And there's the difference. Okay, my camera is overheating, so just a few more. You know what pisses me off? When people get mad at me for putting up my Christmas decorations, quote unquote, early. This one still stands. I'm sorry. This one still stands. I'm just going to read it, and then I'll add to it. Who made you the ruler of the universe? Why do you get to decide when I put up my Christmas decorations? I'm not forcing you to put up your decorations. I'm not canceling Thanksgiving. If anything, I'm making my house look better for Thanksgiving. They take a lot of flipping time. This is before I cussed. A lot of flipping time and energy to put up. And I want them to stay up as long as possible. Get over yourself. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Here's this really amazing picture of my sister and me awkwardly smiling while decorating my Christmas tree to get my parents' Christmas tree together. You're welcome. I don't know why I put that in there. But also, there is no set time as to when you can decorate for Christmas. I will never understand why me putting lights up on my house causes such anger for other people. Why do you care when I put up my Christmas tree? How does that affect you? And in the States, we go, well, when is the right time? Like after Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. So the whole fucking world has to wait until an American holiday has passed? A shitty one at that? So they can put up their decorations. You're going to tell me the people in Europe, the people in Australia, the people in Canada have to wait until our stupid Thanksgiving holiday where we made up a holiday and lied about how we were like, that we were friends with indigenous people and really we just killed them and sexually assaulted and did all, just, no, no. And then people are like, December 1st, why? Why? You want me to put all of my decorations up for 25 days, 30 days? No. I don't decorate early now because I don't have the time, but when I, I like it anytime in November, 
Anytime in November when I decide, when the mood strikes me, I want to decorate. I don't want to hear shit about it because it's not your house. How is this negatively affecting you? I get if people start playing Christmas music like in November, then it can get a little old because there's only so many songs you can play. I get Christmas music. I've heard that debate and I, I get that one. I'll stand by that. But me decorating my house, fuck off. Yeah. Get out of here. Get over yourself. All right, we're going to read one last one. Number 20. You know what pisses me off? When people let their pride get in the way of things. This is still true to this day. Um, but I'm also a hypocrite because I used to and sometimes, regrettably, still let pride get in the way. It's a human thing. But there are some people that were in my life that are no longer in my life that did it a lot. Stop it. You're stupid. People should take pride in their amazing accomplishments and make the world a better place. For instance, heart surgeons can take pride in the fact that they've successfully taken the heart of a dead person and put it in the body of a dying person to make them not dying. A round of applause for them. But if you're too proud to admit that you've done something wrong and that you've hurt people in return, then you're stupid. I've seen so many people fight because someone won't let go of their pride, even though they are clearly in the wrong. This happens in so many areas of life. Not backing down from a physical or verbal altercation. Not accepting help. Not accepting money. Not admitting that you're wrong, etc. And sometimes being that prideful is really just you being a stubborn brat. For example, let's say there are four friends. Three are comfortable in the amount of money they have and one is lacking in the financial department, which is nothing to be ashamed of. We've all been there. Some of us still are. Let's call that friend Banana. Now, imagine all four friends are hanging out and one of the wealthier friends comes up with a fun activity for them all to do, but it costs a little more than the average ad- adventure. The three financially stable friends get super excited, but Banana says the group can't do it because it's too expensive. The person who came up with the idea realizes it was a little rude to assume everyone would pay for it, so he or she insists on paying for the activity for everyone because it was their idea. Seems generous and sensible, correct? But then Banana still says no because they have too much pride to accept handouts from people. Therefore, none of the friends can go on the most epic adventure of their life, because Banana is too prideful. See how that can be a total crotch shot to a good time? Gosh darn it, if someone is offering to pay for your Disneyland ticket, put on your dang Mickey Mouse ears and skip down Main Street. Obviously, mooching isn't the best, and I can understand wanting to make it on your own, but sometimes you need to swallow your pride for the bigger picture. That was a very specific example. Um, but I mean, it is true. Like I get not wanting handouts for sure. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to let your friend pay for something every once in a while. It's okay to admit that you're wrong. That will actually make you a better person. Uh, that one was a little deep, but we'll end there. We got through 20. Did you guys like this? Do you like to see the mind of, well, how was I? 26 year old Rachel? Versus now, I've learned a lot. I'm not as angry, but I still think a lot of these held true. (laughs) Uh, But that's it for today. I love you guys. I'm going to go drink some tea and rest my voice. You're all beautiful people. Please subscribe. Please follow. If you like this, let me know. I'll continue reading my book on the solo episodes. If not, I'll do something else. But I have started planning segments to make this a little more enjoyable for you. But with that, I'm going to peace out now. You can get this book on Amazon if you want. You don't need to, though. (laughs) I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!